Since the beginning of astronomy, humans have considered colonizing distant worlds. We've authored books and produced movies about it. However, it appears that we are closer than ever to realizing this concept. Many options have been explored by scientists, and some have been identified for Earth 2.0. How would it be to dwell inside the underground lava tubes of Mercury or among the clouds of Venus? Which planet will see the first settlements of humans? And how will our lives change after we move out of our house? Prepare to learn about the projects that SpaceX and NASA have been working on and the upcoming events. Elon Musk is certain that without conquering other planets, humanity will not be able to exist. We shall have access to abundant natural resources and be able to weather any potential apocalyptic event thanks to the exploration of extraterrestrial worlds. And Mars ought to be the place to start. According to SpaceX's CEO, human settlers will arrive on Mars for the first time by 2029, and a few years later, the first settlements will spring up all over the planet. Even though the forthcoming mission is well underway, Mars is still a dangerous planet. Consider dust, for example. The strong winds there would cause dust to continuously collect on solar panels, rendering them inoperable. The planet's surface is covered in tiny rocks, which may be even more dangerous. NASA released photos of the Curiosity rover's tires being ripped apart by Martian soil in 2022. Actually, Mars is really unfriendly. Without spacesuits or other protective gear, a person on the surface would rapidly freeze to the consistency of an ice cube due to the extreme cold, with an average temperature of around minus 60 degrees Celsius, dash 80 degree F. There is no defense against cosmic radiation on the planet because its atmosphere is 100 times thinner than Earth's, and its magnetic field is extremely feeble. Furthermore, the atmosphere of Mars is a toxic mixture of nitrogen, argon, and carbon dioxide, meaning there is nothing to breathe. But all of this can be resolved with the aid of contemporary technology. Not even the nearly threefold reduced gravity compared to Earth will cause much trouble, despite the fact that using specialized workout equipment for several hours a day will be required to maintain your fitness level. People are already getting ready to land on the red planet thanks to Elon Musk. However, the flight will be somewhat lengthy. Mars and Earth are separated by an average of 225 million kilometers, 140 million miles. It would take 223 years to reach that destination if you were traveling at 112 kilometers per hour, 70 miles per hour. The planets are separated by approximately 400 million kilometers, 250 million miles, at their furthest point and 62 million kilometers, 38.5 million miles, at their closest point. When the orbits of the two planets are closest, which happens about every two years, is the ideal moment for spaceflights to Mars from Earth. The most sophisticated Starship spacecraft would launch from Earth at this time. Every ship will be linked to a 42 Raptor engine, reusable carrier rocket. At 122 meters, 400 feet, in height, the rocket is the tallest ever constructed, even topping NASA's Saturn V moon rocket. The spacecraft will reach a speed of 8,650 km per hour, 5,375 miles per hour, thanks to the booster rocket, after which it will separate and come back to Earth. After delivering humans to Mars in roughly seven months, the ship may be sent back to Earth using its own engines after its tanks are filled with fuel produced on Mars. A facility on Mars will be constructed to create liquid oxygen and methane from water ice and atmospheric carbon dioxide, which will be used as fuel for rockets. The spaceship is designed to accommodate up to 200 passengers and 100 tons of cargo. Approximately 1,000 trips will be made by the Starship flotilla annually. At this rate, a city with millions of residents and a developed economy might emerge on the Red Planet by 2050, according to Musk. The plan is to erect a metropolis covered in domes for protection. Before humans come, robots will construct the homes, and settlers may use 3D printers to manufacture the remaining housing. NASA has already conducted a contest under a unique initiative known as the 3D Printed Habitat Challenge to determine the greatest Martian home. 
The Mars Icehouse Project, a four-story igloo that is an Eskimo yurt modified for Martian conditions, took first prize. It boasts a spiral staircase connecting its numerous units and common areas. The walls of the rooms would be bent to provide the impression of greater space. Elon Musk, however, feels that creating a settlement that is self-sufficient in resources from Earth is more crucial than the actual design of the homes on Mars. Solar-powered hydroponic farms would be used to raise food. It's still unknown whether earthly plants will establish themselves in Martian soil. In a similar vein, lunar soil has recently been put to the test. If people live on the moon, they will have to grow at least some of their own food. Scientists from NASA and the University of Florida seeded green crops in volcanic ash and lunar regolith, then added a nutrient solution to see if this would work. Arabidopsis thaliana, a relative of mustard, is a plant that grows in the tropics. In this combo, cruciferous veggies sprouted wonderfully. And as a result, the moon was given a higher colonization score. Our satellite is still too small to exist as a second Earth. Researchers are looking into every planet in the solar system, including Mercury, that might eventually replace Earth as our home planet. It is hard to think of a new Earth as a celestial planet that revolves around the Sun so closely. With no atmosphere to block solar radiation, Mercury's surface is heated by our star to an average of 179 degrees Celsius, 354 degrees Fahrenheit, with a daily maximum temperature that can reach as high as 427 degrees Celsius, 800 degrees Fahrenheit. This was addressed in 2011 with a proposal for a remedy. Numerous Swiss cheese-like shapes that the Messenger spacecraft observed on Mercury's surface may be signs of subterranean lava tunnels. Such tubes would naturally shield colonies from the sun's rays and from extremely cold or hot conditions. However, the absence of gravity remains a problem. Human muscles lose their normal load when gravity is absent, and they quickly start to atrophy. And the damage to our bones would be greater. For example, during prolonged weightlessness, bone mass first shrinks. As a result of the bones not being under stress, calcium begins to dissolve and release into the bloodstream, raising the risk of bone fracture. If gravity were removed, blood pressure would stabilize uniformly throughout the body as it is far lower in the human brain than it is in the feet. This may result in a stroke, blood vessel hemorrhage, and blurred vision. But if we move to Venus, we won't have to deal with these issues. The gravity of the planet is nearly equivalent to that of Earth. Venus has a thick atmosphere that might protect settlers from radioactivity. Furthermore, it is possible to extract oxygen from the planet's atmosphere, which contains a significant amount of carbon dioxide. But there's a catch, a living hell is hidden beyond Venus' heavy cloak. The temperature rises to roughly 475 degrees Celsius, 900 degrees Fahrenheit, due to the strong greenhouse effect caused by large amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The atmospheric pressure on Venus is comparable to that of an earthly depth of 900 meters, 3,000 feet. Therefore, even the most well-protected probes would only be able to stay there for a few hours before the massive atmospheric press crushed them. Even more toxic than the most acidic rain on Earth, lethal acid rain frequently floods the planet's upper atmosphere. And everything in its path gets blown away by the wind, which travels at a speed of 360 km per hour, 225 miles per hour. Therefore, why do scientists still think of settling on such a terrible planet? As it happens, Venus conceals a location similar to Earth. There's a zone at roughly 50 kilometers, 30 miles above Earth where the gravity and pressure are nearly identical. Additionally, the temperature ranges from 30 to 50 degrees Celsius, 85 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Thus, it could be a smart idea to construct floating dwellings behind the planet's clouds. The high-altitude Venus operational concept is already in the process of being developed by the NASA team. The original mission was for an airship that would be 34 meters, 112 feet high and 129 meters, 423 feet long, with a thin outer coating to protect it from extreme heat. One suggestion was to elevate the airship and make its entire volume habitable by using a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen. It would enable the airship to float above the clouds since it would become lighter than the Venusian atmosphere. Venus is close to the Sun, thus there would be enough solar energy available to power floating dwellings and keep the airship cool. However, there's another fantastic location for colonists at the edge of the solar system. Titan is the tenth largest object in the solar system, including the Sun, despite being Saturn's satellite. 
It is about the size of a small planet. Its diameter is 0.40 times larger than Earth's, 1.48 times larger than the Moon's, and 1.06 times larger than Mercury's. Compared to all other celestial bodies in the solar system, the massive satellite most closely resembles our planet. Titan contains a large number of liquid ethane and methane lakes that remarkably resemble Earth's water bodies. Methane rains continuously replenish them. The terrain is covered with solid hydrocarbon dunes that resemble Earth's sand dunes. The colonists may have a great supply of energy from these hydrocarbons. Humans would still be protected from radiation even on that far-off planet because Titan's nitrogen atmosphere and Saturn's magnetosphere are both 50% thicker than Earth's. Additionally, oxygen can be produced using the water ice that is immediately below the satellite's surface. Titan is also quite cold. On average, the temperature is minus 180 degrees Celsius, dash 292 degree F. However, colonists don't need to wear spacesuits to protect themselves from the icy cold. Because of Titan's thick atmosphere, which absorbs cold energy, individuals may be able to move around in warm clothing and respirators. Additionally, they might use local raw resources to create plastic housing. According to scientists, we should construct dome-shaped homes on Titan that are inflated with warm nitrogen and oxygen. The ability for the first humans to soar like birds was another distinctive aspect of Titan. If there was weak gravity and a thick atmosphere, you could do stunts in the air while wearing wings on your back. But do we really require life on another star system? Space colonization is not a particularly novel concept, it was first put forth in 1975. However, a group from Stanford University recently created a proposal for a contemporary community among the planets and stars. With a circumference of 1.6 kilometers, 1 mile, and a thickness of 150 meters, 492 feet, it is shaped like a torus. A house like that could house 10,000 people. To produce artificial gravity, it would have to spin non-stop on its axis. An industrial zone would be there to process or from other planets and their satellites. The remaining slag may be disposed of outside since it would act as a trustworthy shield against radiation of all kinds. Every colonist would have a distinct apartment in the living space, situated on several floors. People would frequently see each other upside down as they were connected by spiral stairs. The effect would arise from the structure's continuous rotation. Plans to settle Earth-like exoplanets close to other stars are already being developed by scientists. But do you really think we'll be able to go that far? If you liked the video, please leave a comment with your comments.